It's the handsome Swede that took the car world by storm. And no, I'm not talking about Alexander Skarsgård. Its older brother is a freaking jet. They were always the underdog, but they made cars that revolutionized the entire industry. And if you drive one, you're either a dentist, an architect, or Jesse. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Saab. Saab? What the hell is that? It's Swedish. It's sporty. It's got a key in the middle. Saab had been making planes in Trollhattan, Sweden since the 1930s. But after Dub Dub 2 ended, nobody needed any more planes. So Saab was all, no one is buying any of our planes. What are we gonna do? What if we made planes for the road? You mean cars? Yup. Saab's head designer, Sixten Sassen, got to work. And the whole thing was thrown together in only six months. The result was an aerodynamic family sedan with a two-stroke engine and suicide doors. You could get the 9-2 in any color you liked as long as it was green. In World War II, the Swedish military bought a lot of green paint to camouflage their vehicles, but it was the wrong shade. And Saab bought it all at a discount and used it on the 92. A little green airplane without wings with a dirt bike engine sounds insane. But against the odds, Saab had successfully transformed into a real car brand. Over the years, Saab updated the 92 to the 93. Author Man and number 14 is also making a gallant try. As sales grew, they expanded into other models, like the Sonnet sports car, which we will cover in another episode because it is legit tight. But it was the release of the Saab 99 in 1968 that launched the company onto the world stage. The 99 was Sixton Sassen's final project with Saab. He used it to pass the torch to a new young designer named Bjorn Envall. Together, they created an awesome looking compact sedan that was comfortable, affordable, and dependable. Just like my son, Nolan. And true to its badge, not without its own quirks. For one thing, the ignition was moved from the side of the steering wheel down by the handbrake. Why? Because they don't want you to damage your knee on the key during a crash. In addition, Saab installed the engine backwards. This saved room in the cabin because the clutch is now towards the front of the car. It's something that no other car company would even think of, but Saab didn't think like a car company because they were a plane company. In 1978, Saab made an even better 99 called the 99 Turbo. This was the first time a car company committed to putting a turbocharger in their car. Yeah, I know, before you comment, a lot of other companies did it first, but for them, it was more of an experiment. Saab was the first company to be like, from here on out, we're putting turbos in our cars. In 1979, Saab released their most iconic car of all the 900. It was a continuation of the 99, but better in every way. The body was restyled to make it more aerodynamic. The engine was updated with more power. It had new safety features like a steering column that collapsed in a crash. And you can't forget the turbo. The 900 redefined what an every man's car could be. Finally, you can seat five, keep your knees safe from the keys and have a friggin' turbo. The result was a sensation. The Saab 900 went on to become the company's best selling car. Today, almost every OEM offers a turbocharged model and it's all because of Saab. So Saab is making jet fighters for the road just like they were for the military. And with the 900 taking off, <laughs> business had never been better. In 1989, General Motors purchased a 50% share of Saab for $600 million. Sales of the 900 remained strong. And in 1997, the new Saab 95 was presented to the world. And the 3 million Saab was produced that summer. Until recently, Three different insurers listed the 9.5 as the safest car in the f world. Saab rolled out the 9.3 in 1998. The 9.3 becomes something of an icon, particularly for Seinfeld fans. Black Saab rules! Like the 900 before it, Saab offered an even better version of their new ride. A car so cool, it shared a name with a freaking combat jet. 
the 9-3 Vigen Swedish for Thunderbolt. 252 pounds of torque and 20 pounds of boost. The Vigen was a front wheel drive monster aimed at the BMW M3. It was Saab's version of the European sports sedan, but it was still uniquely Saab. The ignition was still between the seats and the dash still looked like it was ripped out of an airplane. Try as they might, Saab could never quite get out from under the shadow of other preferred European cars. So the Swedes were forced to sell their remaining stake in the company to GM. And with the Americans in full control, the suits in Detroit decided that it was time for the big ideas at Saab to end. Sorry, Saab. No more big ideas. GM shoved Saab's operation together with Opel and pretty much everything they put out after that was just a rebadged version of an Opel or a Chevy. And at one point, even a Subaru. The Saab 92X Aero, affectionately known as the Saabaru, it was basically a WRX wagon with a different face. Jesse owns one of those too and his insurance is cheaper than a WRX. Sales fell way off, and GM went into bankruptcy in 2008. They sold Saab to a new company called National Electric Vehicle Sweden, which hopes to produce electric versions of the 9.3 for sale in China, but they won't be called Saabs. The original aircraft company has reclaimed the rights to that name. At least for now, we will never see another Saab car again. The story of Saab is the story of an independent spirit, a bunch of Swedish aeronautical engineers who decided to make a jet for the road. There's no great way to say what makes a Saab great, except that they were Saabs. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Saab, the second best Swedish car company ever. As always, like, subscribe, comment, share, Go hit that sub button. Ooh, we have a show page now. Follow the show page for up to speed. We recently just launched a Tesla into space. Please tweet at Elon Musk. I really want him to see it. Follow Donut on Instagram, at Donut Media. Follow me on Instagram, at James Pumphrey. Go to shop.donut.media. You get a shirt, you get a sticker, new merch coming soon. I love you.